elderly. He may punch me. That means I'm abusing his mother. If I say my begotten son, he'll get angry. I'm insinuating that I had sex with his mother. So son. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanilungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we react to um, we post reaction videos. But we've got a second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0. You can head there and just enjoy the content that's there. Other than that, there's also other things that we do, of which you guys can actually go to the description box and see the links to everything else that we do. And a big shout out to the person that suggested this. Thank you very much. And a big shout out to everyone that's been subscribing commenting interacting with us you guys are the best thank you thank you thank you so as you can tell from the title i'll be reacting to banker challenge dr zaki naik from bible uh dr zaik naik i'm shocked that i haven't done this reaction before otherwise that thumbnail looks very very familiar so without wasting time let's get into the video <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Zakir Naik. Um, this is Mary. Uh, I'm a Christian and a banker by profession. Uh, my question uh, for you is based on your statement that uh, nowhere in the Bible it's mentioned that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And uh, based on my knowledge and understanding of Bible, I have picked up two verses to quote, and uh, I would like only your clarification in the light of Islam. The first one is Matthew chapter 3, verse number 17. And blow a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The second is John chapter 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whosoever shall believe, believe in him shall not die but have everlasting life. That's right. <laughs> Sister, just to correct your statement, you made a question saying that I said that nowhere in the Bible it says that Jesus is the Son of God. I never said that nowhere in the Bible is it mentioned that Jesus is Son of God. I said there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible. There is not a single unambiguous statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God always is worship me. I never said the Bible does not say Jesus is Son of God. What I said, there is not a single unambiguous statement. Not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God always says worship me. If you point out any such two statements, I am ready to accept Christianity. If your question assumes that Son of God means Jesus is God, very well, I'll reply to your question. Many Christians think that just by the statement Son of God means Jesus is God. Sister, do you know in the Bible, Adam is Son of God? Ephraim is son of God, Israel is son of God. God has got sons by the tons in the Bible. That means you haven't read your Bible, sister. So do you mean to say all of them are gods? Is Adam God? Is Ephraim God? Is Israel God? No. Son of God, sister, is a statement used if you read Romans chapter number 8, verse number 14. All those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Means if you follow the commandment of God, if I follow the commandment of God, I am a son of God. In this way, undoubtedly, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, verily, is the most beloved son of God. Meaning, he is following the commandment of God. I have got no problem at all. If you say, son of God means, persons who follow the commandments of God, like it's mentioned in Romans, all those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. If I follow the commandment of God, you follow the commandment of God, we are called children of God. Very innocent statement, no problem. So as far as your Matthew 
is concerned, 317 have clarified. Now coming to your second quotation of Gospel of John chapter 3 verse number 16. But what the Christian mission is No, 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 brother Zakir. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not a normal son. He is the begotten son of God. And they quote, Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not die, but have everlasting life. Sister, simple question. What is the meaning of the word begotten? He has given it. No, what is the meaning of begotten? He has it's given his son to the people. No, no, sister. Begotten doesn't mean he's given his son. You know English, I know English. Your English is, mashallah, very good. Begotten doesn't mean he's given his son. If I say you have begotten uh, a son. Not, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Don't I'm give metaphorical scholar. meaning. English I'm not a scholar. I am You're not very, a scholar, but I'm your English layman, is very good. I'm a layman person. And but sister, uh, your English I, I is very good. If I say you have begotten a son, what does it mean? That means you have had sexual relationship with your husband and you begot a son. Begetting is a function of lower animals of sex. How can I attribute this function to Almighty God? Who did God have sex with? Who? That's the reason the scholars of Christianity, if you read the Revised Standard Edition, Revised Standard Version of the Bible, revised by 32 scholars, Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different corporate denominations, they say this word begotten in Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16, is an interpolation, is a fabrication, is a concoction, and they're thrown out of the Bible. So if you read the Bible, if you read the Revised Standard Version, it is the best seller in the world. Revised Standard Version revised by not Muslims, not Hindus, 32 Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different corporate denominations. They say this word begotten is not present in the original manuscript of Gospel of John chapter 3 verse 16. What they say, it's an interpolation, it's a fabrication, it's a concoction, it's an adulteration. So. So Jesus is just like a son, like a Adam a son of God, Ephraim a son of God, Israel a son of God. He's a prophet of God. So I've got no problem in accepting that verily Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a prophet and a messenger of God, but he was not God. Hope that answers the question, sister. So now, sister. Thank you very much, Dr. Sister, Zachary. can we reverse the role now? Yes, I definitely. said I was ready to accept Christianity if you prove Jesus was God. Would you accept Islam now? Would what, you agree that I, Jesus is a prophet of God? I have still a few more things to clarify. You're most welcome, sister. Why, why do Muslims refrain from the statement, son of God? Why? Yes. If I answer the question, will you accept Islam? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a compulsion. But I think we have a huge population of Muslims in the world. We, we yes. need believers. We do not need only Muslims by name. Yes, so we want Muslim by deed. So we want to become Muslim by deed, not by name, sister. Okay, coming to your question, that why do Muslims refrain from using son of God as a free? Very good question. And that is the reason, sister, if you read the Quran, Quran has got 99 attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, al Akim, most gracious, most merciful, most wise. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his last and final revelation. If there's something like Old Testament and New Testament, Quran is the last testament. In his last testament, he has not used the word Ab. In Arabic, Ab means father. Why? He has used the more difficult word Rab. Rab is more difficult to pronounce than Ab, which means the Lord, the cherisher, the sustainer. He has used Rab as attribute, but not Ab. Why? Because in the previous revelations, previous revelation which was changed, Bible is the changed form of the Injil. People have misunderstood the meaning of Son of God. They started thinking to be begotten son. For example, if I tell, you know, young son, beta tumne achcha sawal pucha. You know, son, you have asked a very good question. If a son asked a question of the age of 10, son, you have asked a very good question. But if I say, you begotten son, you have asked a very good question, he may punch me. He will not say, oh, Zakir is elderly. He may punch me. That means I'm abusing his mother. If I say, my begotten son, he will get angry. I'm insinuating that I had sex with his mother. So son is innocent word. Begotten son is not innocent. Same way, the son is a very good word, but people started misunderstanding. 
So to remove this confusion, that's the reason the Quran does not use the word father as attribute to Almighty God. Otherwise, it's a good word. So same way, we refrain from using son of God because people start thinking that he's God. No Christian ever comes and tells me Adam is son of God, Ephraim is son of God. Why? Bible says Israel is son of God. Why don't you come and tell me? Because they are programmed. No Christian has come and told me that the Bible says Ephraim is son of God. No. Why? Because they are programmed to believe that Jesus Christ is Almighty God. He never said he's Almighty God. And I told you earlier, in my earlier answer, he never claimed divinity. That means you are insulting Almighty God. That means you are insulting Jesus Christ. Peace be upon him. That's what I say. If Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. You know why? Because if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, he was circumcised on the eighth day. We Muslims are circumcised, Christians are circumcised. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he said that you have to follow each and every law of the Bible, each and every commandment. Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse number 17 to 20. If you break one law or jittle from the commandment, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. If you go to the Old Testament, it clearly says in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7 to 8. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse number 2 to 5, that you shall not have pork. Muslims don't have pork, but Christians have pork. So if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, verse number 18, that thou shall not have wine. It's mentioned in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 1. Wine is a mocker. You should not have wine. Muslims don't have alcohol, but the Christians have alcohol. Further, if you analyze, there are various references I can give you. So if Christian means one who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, I say that I am more Christian than the Christian themselves. If you become a Muslim, you are a more better practicing Christian than the so-called namesake Christians. Yes, sister. Uh, can I ask something? Sure, you are. Yeah, yeah. right. You're most welcome, sister. I would not like to cross-question or uh, criticize your statement. Sister, you're most right welcome to cross-question me. You're most welcome to criticize me. I love it. Unless a person doesn't cross-examine. See, suppose I want to prove something. If I say this is the best, I want to check it out whether it's best or not. That's right. Because a logical person, so please, sister, cross-examine me, criticize me, attack me. Once you're convinced, then you accept it. Yes, sister, go ahead. I will definitely not intend to do something like this. The object of questioning more is to know more so that I know what I follow is right. That's all. Thank you very much. Sister, you can ask any question, no problem. You're most welcome. Whether your intention, your intention is very good, but I went to the extent of saying even your intention is bad, no problem. But your intention is very good, sister. You, so you can ask any questions. And you don't have to accept Islam. No one can force you. Quran says, I craft with deed. There is no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. So don't think that if I answer your question, you have to accept. On the day of judgment, only give the evidence that I gave you the answer. Yes, sister. Any questions? Thank you very much. Yes, sister. Uh, you said that uh, we Muslims are better Christians than the actual Christians. So... The complete statement I made, if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. Yes, sister, your question. But uh, this, is, uh, this is not a layman statement. Don't I layman being, do not have a specialized knowledge of Islam and as well as Christianity. And you can ask the doctors of divinity whether I'm saying is right or wrong. Yes, sister. Thank you very much, Dr. Zanang. So what is the question that? That was my question that why did you mention that we Muslims are better Christians than the actual Christians? When I said that, why did I say that? I think that? this is beyond my thinking that That's why right. would a Muslim call himself a Christian? No, correct. Why? Because we love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We love him more than you. We love him, we respect him, we revere him. But we don't worship him. The reason I said this is because I love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I respect him. I revere him, but I don't worship him. Because he never told me to worship him. If he would have told me to worship him, I would have worshipped him. So that's the reason I say, if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, I'm more Christian than the Christian themselves. 
Because I love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I respect him, I revere him, but I don't worship him. So hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you very much. interesting i always say i enjoy these questions because people are always asking questions that most people are afraid to ask and it was interesting to listen to i mean she had some good questions and he tried his best to answer them at the end of the day i like the fact that she admitted that someone asks because they want to know more where they're not clear and that's what um that's what um caught my attention otherwise the conversation before was fine but i love the fact that she said because i don't know much i'm here to find out more you lower yourself not lower yourself but you humble yourself to the fact that you don't block yourself you're open-minded you want answers to things that you may not have answers to or the people at home have answers to otherwise this was very um nice to watch let me know what you guys think Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe.